So this shows us that acetic acid dissolves in solution according to this formula. Acetic acid dissolves in solution according to this formula. So maybe to be precise, we should write that like this to show that these would be an aqueous phase. This is acetic acid, and this is acetate. Of course, after an acid loses its proton, it turns into its conjugate base. If sodium acetate is added, to a solution of acetic acid, Excess water. So now let's say that we add sodium acetate to the solution. Question, what will be the effect of that on the pH? Will that cause the pH to go up, to go down, or stay the same? It would go up. That was fast? How did you figure that out? Um, because you're adding more um, base. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that's not the answer I was going for, but that, that's a good answer. Okay, you're, all right. You're, um, when you're adding that uh, acetate, you're essentially snagging a proton, and it's uh, putting the reaction to the left or in the reverse, and you have no more hydro or hydronium or H plus on the right, right side. You know when you don't have that, that you're, gonna have, uh, you're not going to have a, a acidic pH. Right, okay, that's good. That's Pretty similar to what she was saying with more details, but that's good. That, that's a good way to think about this. So it should be pretty obvious that if you add base, you're going to have a higher pH. But now we want to think about that in terms of the concepts from this chapter, although what your, your analysis was exactly right. So who are we changing directly here? So we're, uh, we're changing um, the acetate. Yeah, so we're changing the acetate concentration. Is it going up or down? Yeah, we're adding acetate. So what does Le Chatelet say about that? That nature would uh, try to decrease it. Right. So we'd be going in reverse. Rate. The reaction will shift into reverse. That's right. The reaction will shift into reverse. And what will be the effect of that on the amount of protons? Because when we go in reverse, we're using up the protons. And what's the effect of that on the pH? Just like you had said. OK. So actually, you said a second ago that if you add base, the pH goes up. But now we know why adding base increases the pH. It's because of Le Chatelet's principle. Le Chatelet's principle. Because remember that pH is ultimately, pH is not defined on how much base there is. It's defined on how much hydronium there is. So to really explain why adding base should change the pH, we have to see why adding base changes the proton concentration. Now we see why adding base changes the proton concentration. It's because the base is on the same side of the reaction. So that shifts us away from that side of the reaction, which gives us less of the proton concentration. All right, so we can use this to explain something we might already have assumed about acid-base chemistry. Use Le Chatelet's principle. All right, well, this is a good example, uh, then, of uh, how Le Chatelet's principle might be tested. By the way, um, well, here, we, you, uh, you could have gotten this up without thinking about Le Chatelet's principle. It's obvious now that we should be thinking about Le Chatelet because we've been talking about it. Very often, I find that when people are actually taking the tests, they forget about Le Chatelet's principle, and they don't realize when the question is about that. You will very rarely see the term Le Chatelet used on the test. It's our job to notice when the question is about Le Chatelet's principle. So you've got to look for applications of this. Uh, how, how would you notice it? I don't know. It's not that easy. But ask for about. Um, Basically, this applies when the system is being disturbed in some way. If they ask you what's the, going to be the response to some change, maybe you should use Le Chatelet's principle to figure that out. That's a very common type of question, where they say, we're making this change, what's going to be the result? So you have to remember that maybe Le Chatelet's principle is the way they expect to answer that type of question. Oh, also, what will be the effect? So what did we decide? We decided the pH will go up. What's going to be the effect of this on the pKa? of acetic acid. What? Okay. 
nodes here. We want to know if we're adding more sodium acetate. Oh, by the way, I should have mentioned we're assuming here that the sodium acetate will dissolve into acetate and sodium. But that's true because sodium is completely soluble with everything. So adding more sodium acetate will increase the concentration of acetate. So this logic was correct. Um, now, if we add more sodium acetate, we know that'll increase the pH. What effect would that have? What effect would the extra sodium acetate have on the pKa of the acetic acid? Is the question. Um, it would. Uh, it would also increase. Now let's think about that. So, um, how do you calculate the pKa? Uh, you take the negative log of the Ka. Yeah, and what so is what does Ka? What is a Ka? What is a Ka? It's the equilibrium constant for an acid reaction. In fact, it's the equilibrium constant for this reaction. It's the equilibrium constant for this reaction, because this is the acid ionization reaction for acetic acid. So what we're really asking is, what's the effect of adding sodium acetate on this equilibrium constant? Oh, it's not going to change at all. Because it doesn't change. Because what? Yeah. When we add more of one of the reagents, what happens to the K? OK. K is constant. So what happens to the Ka? It's constant. Because they're the same. For this reaction, the Ka is the constant. It is the K. It's too easy to forget that concept. Yeah. So what happens to the pKa? So it's constant, yeah. Because the pKa is just the negative log of the Ka. So if the Ka is not changing, the pKa shouldn't change. So what was the answer to the question? What's going to happen to the pKa here? It's going to remain the same. Remain the same. OK, yeah. So um, that is a common trap on the test, trying to get people to think that changing concentrations changes the K. Here, uh, we saw a bunch of examples of that before. But here, it was easy to make that mistake, because this didn't seem like an equilibrium constant. But we know that this is based on the Ka, and the Ka is just an e a special type of equilibrium constant. So changing concentrations doesn't change the Ka. Um, it would change the Q, but it doesn't change the Ka. After all, this is a measure of how acidic the acid is. Right? Well, that's just a physical characteristic of the acid you can look up in a table. If we add acetate to this reaction, your textbook is not, the table in the textbook is not going to magically change to a different pKa, right? So they can't be, it doesn't make sense that changing concentrations can change pKa's because those are set numbers in tables that you can look up. Um, this has a pKa based on the fact that it's a weak acid. Um, and, based, and that's based on what its equilibrium is like. Changing the actual concentration doesn't change what things would look like at equilibrium. So that's the big difference between these two things. How do you calculate the P? This is based on the actual concentration of protons. Actual concentration of protons. But this is based on an equilibrium constant, which is based on equilibrium concentrations, not actual concentrations. I noticed that a lot of students um, confuse pH and pKa. We're not focusing on acids and bases today, but that's a very common mistake, to confuse the pH and the pKa. In fact, I think a lot of students don't even realize they're two different things. They just kind of use them interchangeably. Well, that's a big mistake. The pH is the negative log of the actual amount of protons in a solution. And the pKa is the negative log of the equilibrium constant for an acid reaction. They're really not that similar in concept. So, uh, in, um, so the pH is almost like the Q? Uh, pH is a similar type of concept to Q because they're both based on concentrations. The Q here would be based on this concentration times this concentration divided by this concentration, whereas the H is just based on this concentration. But they are so, but the Q is more complicated, but you're right that they're similar because they're both based on the actual concentrations at one point in time. I think people probably get confused because if you think about like the way that people typically um, interpret like PKAs, mm -hmm. it's mostly in comparison like which one is more acidic, which one is more basic. So I think when you interpret um, a pKa, it's like totally relative to something else, but they don't take into account, yeah, exactly what you're saying, the fact mm -hmm. that what pKa really means. Yeah, so. yeah, I think that's part of it. The other thing is, there's two me different meanings to the word acidic. Yeah. You could be describing a solution, or you could be describing an acid, or a molecule. When you say a solution is acidic, you mean it has a lot of protons dissolved in it. When you say a molecule is acidic, you mean that it wants to donate protons. So the, it's like a pun. The word acidic is used to mean two different but similar sounding things.
you can say a solution is acidic or a molecule is acidic. If you say a solution is acidic, you mean that the solution has many protons dissolved in it. If you say an acid, if you say a molecule is acidic, you mean it wants to donate protons. Well, they're related because if you put an acidic molecule in a solution, the solution will become acidic, but they're still different concepts. This is a measure of how acidic the solution is, because it measures how many protons are in the solution. This is a measure of how acidic the molecule is, because it's based on the equilibrium constant for that molecule's reaction. So they really are different.